Okay, traders, welcome to this week's live analysis session with me, Patrick Lumley. Just before we get started here, can I do a quick audio and visual check? If you can see, tick me a welcome screen and you can hear me loud and clear. If you could type a Y in the chat box and we will uh, we'll get going here. <clears throat> Um, also, just before we start, if you do have any questions, if you can just make a note of them uh, during the session and, uh, and I'll open up uh, Q&A at, uh, at, uh, at the end of the presentation. So um, before we jump into today's discussion, obviously uh, important to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Uh, we know that uh, trading any financial instrument carries an inherent risk, but most importantly for today's uh, discussion, any views or opinions expressed by me today are solely mine. They are not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So um, for those who are here for the first time, brief introduction to myself. My name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from university, I joined a city uh, PLC consulting firm. After a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup uh, post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling, uh, the S&P 500. And after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. As the market phase changed, I began to average down into what were ultimately going to prove to be uh, significant losses. I actually ended up giving back all the gains I'd made and, and took a, a six-figure hit to my personal capital. Uh, to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement, and I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading, sort out a mentor with uh, an excellent trading track record, and, um, and really spent, I guess, 18 months to uh, two years um, working with my mentor to uh, develop and, uh, and understand a trading strategy that, um, that suited my personality. Um, this is an, an important aspect of, of trading that many overlook when you're looking at trading strategies. It's really important to, uh, to align your strategy with your personality. And certainly um, from a time, time frame perspective, that's important. Uh, so during this period, I extensively back tested and forward tested, uh, developing the strategy underpinned with a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift I made was from being a highly goal orientated, uh, financial gains focused individual to really becoming purely process orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the market in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have that professional uh, trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading simply being a numbers game in which you are playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or a string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Performance figures you can see on the screen are from, 2000, uh, from 2013 uh, when I started managing investor capital through my managed accounts service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Uh, since 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've consulted uh, to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing uh, written content, webinars, and live presentation content on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also the resident market expert for Tickmill, where I provide a daily uh, 
market outlook and the daily chart of the day is set up that I'm watching in the markets. You can, uh, you can actually sign up through the Ticknell blog to get those delivered to your inbox. And, um, and that will give you a real flavor of, of how, I sco how I scope and frame the markets and how I, uh, how I ultimately uh, deliver consistent profitable returns. Um, my other, I guess my passion project is as head of trading and trader education for a leading trading education brand, fxcareerswap.com, offering development and funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders market and trading strategy knowledge, we work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And for those that are interested in learning more, you can see on the screen now, there's a number there, you can call the trading desk in London, or you could uh, send an email through to the guys and they'll come back to you with any relevant information that you require. So that is a flavor of my background and where I'm coming from. And now we will jump into the charts. We've got a, uh, a bunch of interesting opportunities that, uh, that are some of which are, are, are potentially uh, going to deliver uh, opportunities today even. Um, firstly, I'm gonna start with the equity indexes. So um, we've got the S&P 500. What, we're, what I'm looking for in the S&P 500 is an interim high to, to be developed. Um, whilst we hold uh, this support at the 3900 level, I'm actually looking for a test above the 4000 level. I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns. We've got a, a weekly and a, a monthly R3 pivot points up here, and we've got weekly projected range resistance at 4040. So if we could see a squeeze higher here into the, uh, the back end of the week, watching for bearish reversal patterns to set short positions, uh, initially targeting a move back down to 3860 here, and uh, potentially the uh, ascending trend line support at the 3790 level. We have the Dow Jones here, a uh, little bit weaker than the S&P at the moment, was stronger yesterday. We've noted this, uh, the momentum divergence, we discussed this last week, um, but this are <laughs> obviously on the daily time frame. excuse me. Um, and we've got significant divergence developing here. So any test in terms of, uh, in terms of the Dow Jones, this is the type of thing I'd be looking for here. Any push up into this zone here, the ascending uh, trend line resistance at the 32,200 level. We've also got that weekly and monthly R3 at 32,295. Uh, 32, and we've got the weekly projected range resistance. So any, any reversal patterns up in here, I'm looking for a move certainly down to test the 30,881 level and potentially back into this uh, 29,738 area. The one that's really been of interest to me this week is the Nikkei. I was looking for a test of this confluent zone uh, just above, well, we, we, got a, we got a test. I was looking for a, a test of the 31,000 level. Um, we fell just short of that, but we're potentially going to put in a bearish uh, reversal pattern today. So in terms of my strategy, if we can get a close uh, below the five period VWAP here, 30,158, and there'll be an opportunity on the short side, looking for a test of the ascending trend line support here at 28,800 and 29,000 these prior highs would be the initial downside objective. If we get through the trend line, then look for a test of the primary trend line back down to 27,000. Dollar, so dollar obviously under pressure. This is the, the Dow Jones dollar index, uh, equal weighted versus four uh, FX majors. So we have the Aussie, the yen, uh, sterling, and the euro. And um, we can see here, we're seeing a bit of weakness. We've traded into this trend line resistance for well, almost a fourth test here. And we're getting a, a potential bearish rejection candle developing here. If, uh, if that plays out today and we get a, a red close, then I would anticipate we're going to take out these, uh, this trend line support here at the uh, 116 level. And I'd be looking for a move down into 115 as the next downside objective. Note that we're already starting to roll over here in terms of the psych indicator, which is flipping bearish as well. So uh, pay attention to this equal weight of dollar index in terms of the, uh, the potential next leg to the downside in terms of the dollar. Uh, the broader dollar index, this is uh, the dollar index versus um, six major currencies. 
the what we've got here is the potential um, if we can hold uh, the 90 level that uh, we could actually see another leg of um, of upside here in terms of the dollar index to test a, an equality objective up to 92.52. However, we've traded into the projected weekly range resistance and we're seeing, a, we're seeing a reversal here now. So similar to the equal weighted dollar index, it may be that uh, we've seen uh, the end of this corrective phase here. Uh, we want to see a breach of this uh, trendline support to encourage the view that the dollar correction is, uh, is complete and we will be headed lower. Ultimately, I'm looking for a test of 87.50 on the, uh, on the dollar index um, once we start to, uh, to roll over here again. So keeping an eye on both of those dollar indexes for, for the double confirmation there. And what's been driving a lot of the market action recently has been the US 10 year yield here, trading up to 130. We've taken out the trend line resistance so um, we've got probably got some, uh, some clear water here, certainly up potentially to, to 150, 143, 150 area. If, uh, if we can hold outside of this trend channel now, and you can see we've got a steeper uh, trajectory developing here now, which, uh, which certainly could see us up at this 150 level in terms of US yields. Uh, gold. Gold. Whilst we uh, whilst we hold this pivot, this swing high here at 1960, I'm looking for a test of uh, 1653 in terms of gold, or certainly down into the trend channel support at the 1715 area. From there, if we can see some uh, bullish reversal patterns, then there'll be an opportunity on the long side. But at the moment, uh, watching for a break here to take us down into that 17. Uh, 1715 area, which also represents the projected monthly range support. So certainly be paying attention to how we trade if we test that zone. Uh, crude oil, I posted this one on the blog this week. We've tested up into uh, the resistance zone I was tracking here at uh, 62.40. And we're seeing a bit of reaction here. If we get a close today back through 60.50, uh, that would be a, an opportunity to do something on the short side in crude oil, looking ultimately for a test of the ascending trend line support somewhere down to 57.50. Then what I'd be looking for is bullish reversal patterns to uh, set long positions, looking for a test of the projected ascending uh, primary trend line here at uh, up to $70. However, if we took out this trend line support, then we can easily be back into these prior highs here at uh, the 5390 level. But initially, if, uh, if there's a confirmation today, then the downside objective will be into this 5750 level. Copper also traded, has traded right into the projected ascending trend line resistance. So this is one that you could actually look, uh, if we just flip to the four hour chart here, you can see we could potentially get a signal on the four hour chart what I'd be looking for would be a close through uh, 389. So that would flip the, uh, the VWAP bearish and uh, with the nice mom uh, momentum divergence we've got there into this resistance zone, then that can be an opportunity. A, a way of scaling into what could ultimately become a, a daily signal. Uh, if you go back to the daily charts. Um, so we've got a bit of work to do obviously to, to get a reversal today, but uh, these are the areas, the inflection points you want to pay attention to. So I'd look, uh, I'd look, be looking at the close uh, in the next 45 minutes to see if there's a, a bearish rejection there in, uh, in copper to do something on the short side. And uh, initially you target, retest the prior highs here, at 372. Ultimately what I'd look for is a test of the ascending trend line support, primary trend line support down to 350 in terms of uh, in copper. Bitcoin. Been on a tear, as, uh, as is well publicized. Um, what I'm looking for now with Bitcoin is this uh, projected ascending trend line resistance. We've got the uh, monthly R3 projected weekly range resistance somewhere up towards 56,700. And I think from there we can see a pullback uh, to test the, uh, the interim trend line support back to 48,000. Um, but ultimately, I think we can squeeze higher then to get up into the yearly R3 towards 63,000 level in terms of uh, in terms of Bitcoin. 
Dolly Yuan. Trying to break out of this trend channel. I've been talking about this uh, with the guys on the trading team at FX Career Swap. Uh, this 640 level is a um, well, monthly trend line. You can see here. And, um, and it's one that appears to be holding uh, with the dollar yuan here. So if, uh, if we can take out the, um, the descending trend line on a closing basis, then I think there's potential scope for further upside here in terms of the dollar yuan. Uh, certainly we could be exposing the, the yearly pivot point for a test. But um, what, with, when you're in this <coughs> type of trend scenario where we've been heavily trending to the downside, I prefer to play this on the second low. So what I'd be waiting for would be a close somewhere up here, let's say, and then get that secondary low as the entry opportunity to at least target a, a three-way corrective pattern um, and potentially something more significant if we can get up to a test of that uh, month, uh, sorry, yearly pivot point. Dollar yen. So finding some, um, finding some resistance, excuse me, sorry about that. Um, Bear with me, guys. The, uh, it's just frozen. Here we go. Um, so, looking for dollar yen to pull back here and test this ascending trend line support 104.87. That could be a zone whereby, if we uh, we get some bullish reversal patterns, I like that uh, like that on the long side. Certainly with this yield support that we're getting from, uh, from the US 10 year. So if we can get a pullback into this 105, bullish reversal patterns here, I think we can target the primary descending trend line up towards 109. So that's one that's gonna be on the radar for me into probably into next week. Swissy. Uh, try, try to, well, we had, a, we had a, an attempt to the upside here out of this uh, inverse head and shoulders that I talked about. Uh, rejected at monthly range resistance, traded back down into monthly range support. And uh, now, again, we just traded straight into weekly range resistance and we could potentially roll over here. So I want to keep an eye on this, Swissy, because this, uh, this could be the story in terms of this dollar index if, uh, if we see weakness into the close tonight. But, uh, but this was the three-way correction and that the upside uh, is finished for now in terms of the Swissy. And that would set up this as, uh, as a, the impulse leg to complete the bigger um, five wave move to the downside. Let me just show you what I've been thinking in terms of the Swissy. So maybe we get a, some, uh, something like that develop. So really want to pay attention. Close, to, close today, back through the, uh, the pivot point here at 89.30, would uh, potentially flip the daily chart bearish and so uh, this could be the start of the next leg to the downside in terms of uh, in terms of the Swiss. So keeping an eye on that into the close. Looney, um, still contained by its major descending trend line. Haven't been able to get a close above it. And, uh, and I, what I'd be looking for now is ultimately to move down to test 125 as support. And then we potentially we have a wedge that could complete. So we'd be looking something like that. Uh, and then maybe we get a more sustained corrective move in terms of the loony. But at the moment, like this to the downside, um, looking for that 125 level. Euro, uh, had a short running yesterday that looked good, but uh, we just held the weekly range support to the tick almost here. And potential now for a, a bullish reversal here today. We, we want to see a close back through 121. If we did, then that sets up the move to certainly test monthly range resistance 122.50. Um, and we'll have to see then if we, if we can take out the monthly range resistance, then, uh, then we're, we're, we're probably going to take out the 123.50 high on route to a 125 test in terms of the euro. So it's really going to be about the, the close here today in terms of the euro and that, that dollar index. Euro yen. Um, I'm looking, I've, I've, I'm looking to, uh, to sell this if we can break below the overnight lows. Uh, see if we get a pullback here and hold the test of the VWAP coming in around 128, uh, and then we might roll over some. Yeah, I'm, lo I'm looking to sell a break of the overnight lows, and then I'll use a protective stop just above the overnight highs. Um, we broke out of this uh, range resistance at the 127 area. And then we got this big bearish rejection yesterday, plenty of momentum divergence, suggesting the potential for a false break 
and, uh, and giving us an opportunity on the short side. Certainly, we could get a test of the primary uh, descending, uh, sorry, ascending trend line back down to 126.15. Euro sterling, this is one that uh, I've been watching for a while now. Looking, this again is a big trend line test uh, potentially coming up here for Euro sterling. Take you out to the weekly chart, weekly books, maybe even the monthly. So what we're doing basically is sitting right at this, uh, or potentially about to test this trend line support on the monthly chart. So um, what I'm looking for there is a move into, let's screw this out. so looking for 86 level, a test of 86 trade, 86.53 at the moment. And you can, again, this one is one I've watched on the hourly or the four hour chart, intraday reversals. I think we can see a decent bounce at least here uh, for euro sterling from uh, from this trend line so keeping a very close eye on that we've also got projected monthly range support down to 85 82 so watch that area closely I think we get an opportunity there in euro sterling euro aussie it's testing uh coming into monthly range support uh, weekly s3 we've got weekly projected range support just below and uh, you can See here, we've, this is subdivided quite nicely, five wave move, and we've got some decent divergence down here. So watching for bullish reversal patterns here in the Euro Aussie, and certainly play for a test of the descending trend line up to 157.50, if we, uh, if we get the signal. Sterling, looking to, uh, to knock on the door of 140 here, pay very close attention to weekly range resistance, 140.20. We've got this ascending trend line resistance. So this is set up pretty nicely. We've got bags of momentum divergence down here. So 140.15, 140.20 is the level I'm watching for, uh, for bearish reversal patterns set short positions. If we take this out, then the next target, the top, next area I'll be watching for a potential uh, counter trend play will be the 141 level where we've got weekly R3 and monthly R3. So uh, that's, uh, that's one that's on the radar. Sterling yen. <coughs> testing its uh, its resistance zone here. We could get as high as 148, but I think I uh, want to pay attention to how we trade there and get some bearish reversal patterns. I certainly think we can get a move to retest uh, this trend, uh, trend channel support down to say 145. Slight concern with this one is we don't really have any divergence as such. So it may be that, uh, that we, we take this out and then what I'd be paying attention to would be the uh, primary trend line resistance up towards 151. Certainly, if we get in there and we get some reversal patterns, then uh, that would be an opportunity on the, on the short side in the Sterling Yen. Sterling Swiss, nothing for me to do right now. Sterling Kiwi, I'm watching uh, this area here, 94.30. Any, uh, any rejection there, I think, sets up a nice pullback to retest this support area at 92. And from there, I think we could set a potential base then to move higher, looking for that uh, yearly pivot up towards 198. So uh, that one is another one that's on the radar probably for next week now. Aussie. Uh, well, kind of just sideways trade at the moment. So I was looking for um, some consolidation here and, uh, and a bullish reversal pattern set long. I was looking for a test of the 80 level and we could extend higher there through now to um, the 81 level, which would be the projected ascending trend line resistance. Third test should hold on that first test at that level. And then we could get a pullback to retest this 78 level of support before building a base for the next leg higher in terms of the Aussie. Aussie yen, like this one, if we can get a move into the 83, just above the 83 handle, bearish reversal patterns. We've still got momentum divergence. I think we can get a move back down then to retest the 80 handle as support before trying to build a base there for the next leg higher. Aussie Kiwi sitting at trend line resistance here, a bearish reversal today. And I will uh, I'll be looking at this on the short side. And certainly we can think about a retest of the 105.80 area. So paying attention to the closes tonight, tomorrow night on this Aussie Kiwi, that's, uh, that's one that's on the watch list for sure. 
Kiwi is looking to try and break out of its triangle here. If we can, then there are, there's plenty of upside scope for the Kiwi, I think. Uh, certainly we can think about 74, 75 area as the next upside objective. But again, we want to see that close through, uh, through this area before, um, before getting in on the long side. Let's see what we've got here, Kiwi Yen. This is one I'm watching very closely. Any move into this area here, just above 77, watching for various reversal patterns to set short positions, looking for a retest of the uh, primary trend, ascending trend line back down to 74.20 um, is the area I'd be watching there. Kiwi Swiss, looking for 65.20 area here, got projected monthly range resistance, weekly range resistance, we've got this sending wedge trend line resistance coming in. I think that, if we get a reaction there, I'll be looking at that on the short side, looking for a retest of the 63.50 area. Kiwi CAD, nothing for me to do uh, there at the moment. Let me just quickly check, no. Swiss yen, this is, uh, this is what I'm in at the moment on the short side. We, uh, we broke through uh, this resistance area. Big bearish reversal yesterday. Now it's, we'll have to see if we can get any follow through. If we can see follow through then, what I'm looking for is ultimately a test of this ascending trend line support back down to the 116 area. And uh, really want to see this follow through through the overnight lows to encourage that view. Uh, we've got nice divergence on the break there. Which, uh, which is the additional. For me, if I'm gonna trade counter trend, I've, uh, I need to see that uh, momentum divergence as an additional confirmation versus the, uh, the price patterns. So a uh, bit of a whistle stop tour today, but um, hopefully you can see where I see uh, the potential opportunities in the market. Certainly watching this dollar close tonight could, uh, could set the stage for, uh, for another leg of downsides. Are there any questions? If anyone wants me to take a look at a chart I haven't covered, um, you can type it into the, the chat box. Or equally, if you don't have a question, type it in the chat box so I know that uh, we're all on the same page and I can wrap the session up here. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll close this one out, guys. Hope it's, uh, hope it's helpful over, uh, over the coming trading week and we will reconvene at the same time next week. And like I said, with, for daily updates, uh, sign up to the Tickmill blog to receive my charts of the day and daily analysis. Thanks very much, everyone. Hope this helps.